going into Lost Sex Tape, because mm-hmm. you shot that a few months after No Disrespect, right? Uh, six months after. Yeah. Was it six? That's crazy. Um, so that was shot, and Lost Sex Tape is wild. <laughs> so was Stripper Party. So my question really for both of those films, well, I, I'll do them separately. So with Lost Sex, Lost Sex Tape, how were you able to get <laughs> go ahead, girl. Go ahead. Say what you want to say. <laughs> because you know the the main actors in uh, Lost Sex Tapes are like legitimate, real actors. So how were you? I won't say legitimate, but like they have been acting for a while. So how were you able to get them to not only agree to this type of role, but how did you manage? the set because it was like I said it was very wild and out there mm. I mean you're talking about a lot of sex tapes so there's a whole like 10 minute I believe sex scene 15 15 minute sex scene so even just thinking about that like how did you make sure that everyone was comfortable how did you make sure um you know you were still making something that was not just porn but, <laughs> but was something that you know these actors could be proud of um okay so with all of my films one of the most crucial processes that i take pride in is the casting and choosing the right people to do certain shit mm. um with ashanti and alpha those were the, the leads in um the lost sex tape this film wouldn't have been made if I didn't have Ashanti. Mm. Like, I went to her first. When I got the idea, oh, shit, this would be a dope fucking Tubi film idea to do. But if we do it, we got to do it. Mm. We got to go there. All mm-hmm. right. We, we can't do some little bullshit. All right. We got to we gotta make this motherfucker a motherfucker. Because you made Lost Sex Tape before. Right. And Kyle, Lost Sex Tape was the first film I ever made. It was the first Okay. Actual film that I ever um, made in college. Mm-hmm. Actually, shout out to Prey, Prey Prey. That was the girl in the uh, the, the. Don't look like that. No, me and Prey are good. We're friends. She's a dancer. She dances for like little baby and Keith Sweat and shit now. Really? Yeah, no. She's she's always touring. I can't never fucking see her because she's always out. And then shout out to Travis, which you met Travis. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. All right. Uh, <laughs> He was the guy in um, the the Lost Sex Tape. So that was my first film I did in college. And it was just, it was obviously, you know, super popular <laughs> because mm. of the fucking title. And we got a little risque with that. Um, uh, have you seen that sex scene? Yes. Well, I saw, I think I saw clips of it when I watched the documentary. Oh, mm. oh yeah. Oh, then you seen it. I put it all in there. Okay, well then. Cut it up in clips. Okay. But yeah, we got like risque with that. It was really wild to that. They, they really played that in front of like, all the student body like in the auditorium like mm-hmm. in front of the staff and teachers and everything it was like 23 minutes and they really just let that motherfucker run that's still so wild to me for that <laughs> school but it fits for that school mm, okay. because wow whatever so yeah i made that in um college and so me and curry i mean it's a, a definitely got to give curry his credit like me and curry were talking about like tubi films and stuff and what would what what some of our old works would make good tubi films and I thought about the lost sex tape. And mm-hmm. I was like, holy shit, no, that would be a great fucking film. But I got to find a girl who's willing to go there. I got to mm-hmm. find a girl who's willing to. And, you know, most of my close friends that are female, that are actresses, are like you. They're not going to. <laughs> they're not going to do certain things. I know I can't ask certain people to do certain shit. And I needed somebody close to me. Mm-hmm. And I don't have many uh, freaky close friends so um i thought of ashanti ashanti is no but i mean from the not even just because i know her personally but the work she's done i have some freaky friends but they won't get freaky on camera so some of the work that she's done has been some freaky work and me knowing her personally i'm like oh she seems like one of those free spirits you know what i'm saying like oh hey it is what it is. Why are you looking like this, so, bro? So, <laughs> let's say, for people who may not know her, let's say that may that she has done work that may be risque, but is work nonetheless. Like, you know, 
Regina Hall and Best Man. She played a sh- Regina King. Regina Hall. Regina Hall. Regina Hall and Best Man. Mm-hmm. She played a stripper. Yeah. Did a great job. Okay. So you just didn't like the way I said it, or I just don't. I feel like you said it. Well, same. we've already <laughs> called her names, so I want to. That's make sure- personal. That's not business. That is personal. But I want to make sure that, like, you know, we're giving a fair description of people. Okay, so yes, yeah, she's done uh, risque work mm-hmm. before, so that's you know, in my mind of why I would go to her. But also, once again, what I was thinking was even more uh, risque and what, you know, what a lot of people have probably um, fucking done. So I went to her and I showed her the original. I showed her the original and she she knows Prey Prey, which was was super dope, like the dancing community type shit. Um, And I showed her the the original Lost Sex Tape and... I don't want to speak her. But I, I think she liked it. Like she, she liked it. I mean, she was laughing at it or whatever. She liked it. And then I asked her, like, you know, what I'm saying, would would you be able to do something like that? And I asked her about nudity. Like and that's the. There's another thing. Like you know, what I'm saying the shit was wild, but it was supposed to be even more wild than what it was. But because like as a friend, I I didn't. I. I didn't feel all the way comfortable. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I didn't feel comfortable. Everybody else in the room was great. Everything mm-hmm. was, it wasn't no problem in the room when we were filming this stuff. But as a friend, it's like, I didn't want to push her like that. I didn't want to, you know, really kind of like make it look like I'm slutting her out. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, I didn't, I didn't want to feel like that. Cause this, at the time, this is still like a good friend of mine. Like this is a genuine friend. So we even talked about nudity. Like, you know what I'm saying? She was supposed to be nude in the, the fucking film, but I didn't have the balls to ask her, hey, pull your titties out. When it came to the sex scene, um, like I said, like, I, oh, this is a testament to what I mean by, like, how people, you know, per- perceive me type shit. Like, you would think, or which I don't know, it, it sucks, but I know people, some people would think that, oh, Miles was probably being perverted, you know, during the scene and, you know what I'm saying, trying to see as much as possible and all that shit. But no, man, when it comes to shit, especially in the, the business sector, like, I'm not, I'm not that guy, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I I know what the fuck is happening right now. I know, you know, this can be uncomfortable for a lot of people and, you know what I'm saying, what we're actually doing and whatnot. So it's like, I need you to be comfortable. I don't want you to feel uncomfortable. Anything, anything that um, I would have asked her to do, if she would have said, oh, I'm not okay with that, cool. We're not, like, I'm not about to force her to do it. I'm not about to push her to do it. But no boundary was met while we were uh filming that scene at all but once again it's because everybody was comfortable everybody knew what the objective was mm-hmm. with the film like everybody knew you know and i'm saying what the, the point of all of this was but like i said she was supposed to get new but i just i didn't personally have the heart as a friend to add that's literally like me actually just pull your titties out like i can't i, I, I can't do that mm-hmm. and it sucks because of, you know i wish i did because we agreed on it you know what i'm saying it's like damn the movie was supposed to have fucking titties in it, but I apologize, y'all. That's really on me. She was down to fucking do it, but I just couldn't. Um, I just couldn't make that decision. I wish I could have just left the room, you know what I'm saying? And then, all right, hey, yeah, y'all go ahead and do that because I, uh, whatever, man. But yeah, so after we talked about the parameters of the sex scene, if she could do the sex scene, then cool, we're good. And I mean, we talked about a percentage for her to like get on the back end because once again, me ask her, I knew what the fuck I'm about to ask her yeah. to do. So I'm like, I don't want you to just come out this shit empty handed with just footage. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully we do make some money off of this shit. And you know, so you could definitely get a, a piece of that. So explaining to her what the vision was and what we were trying to do and what I needed from her. And like she was down for it. And yeah, that's how we went with that. And then with Afo, two reasons I casted Afo was for one, um, I only worked with him once for No Disrespect. And I really liked him on no disrespect mm-hmm. that night we filmed with him was one of the 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 toughest nights because it was the call time for him was midnight mm-hmm. and you know what i'm saying we probably weren't gonna, gonna get done till like 5 6 a.m and during that time you really see a motherfucker who they are you mm-hmm. know what i'm saying those late night shoots you see a motherfucker mm-hmm. for oh you this is who you really are okay mm-hmm. this ain't daytime this is nighttime type nigga and he was really cool you know what i'm saying he was professional and shit like he knew his lines he was listening he was always attentive he was ready for blocking and stuff like he, i could see that hunger that he had um in him so i really wanted to work with um him again to be honest i tell Kyrie and Corey all the time like i didn't know the nigga was that funny like i didn't know 
the nigga had the comedic chops. I just was hoping that he was good, like as far as like good acting and stuff, and he would be dope. Second reason is, um, <laughs> the nigga Ashanti had to do the sex scene where had to be good looking, so mm-hmm. uh, he wasn't just gonna do it with anybody. Yeah, so which I don't I had blame to. Him. Yeah, so I mean, I don't blame her either. So it was like my choices of attractive niggas was very slim. So I was very honestly very lucky to have Apple. Mm-hmm. Very okay. Yeah. Oh, you would have did that, huh? I mean, okay. Well, very lucky to have. Uh, of time. Anyway, <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> but it's very lucky to have him one because he is a, a good looking brother, but mm-hmm. also because of how good he did. Like I'm saying, yeah. I was so shocked at like that. His the first scene we filmed with him was the um the scene where he died. Mm-hmm. Like that was the first thing we ever filmed with him, and the, the I told him like, yeah, you can improv, do whatever, and all that. And you know what I'm saying? We didn't do rehearsals for this film or nothing. We just showed up and we did it. And so for him to like just go in like how he did, I was like, oh, you're you're an SVS dream. You're <laughs> you're you're so perfect, yeah. bro. So yeah, he's solid. So yeah, so just as long as I had those two, the leads um, of the film like casted and were solid, then. Like, we were good. I mean, we had outside of, once again, you were there on the last day of fucking set. Outside of that issue, I mean, everything was smooth. Like, everything, mm-hmm. it wasn't no, you know what I'm saying, issues or nothing. Yeah. And I think what helped with the, even though it was a 15-minute sex scene, um, it was all comedic. Like, it was, mm-hmm. I was like, when I watched it, I was like laughing <laughs> so hard. Like, they were both hilarious. So, even though it, yeah, was wild, it's all in the name of comedy. And I think mm-hmm. that really helped. Um, kind of balanced it out. So yeah, it made it very lighthearted, mm-hmm. especially when we were filming it. Like mm-hmm. so that film, I mean, that scene just took like three, four hours to actually, um, fucking film, and it was just it's literally stood to me this day out of all the things I've I've um filmed. That's one of the top three funniest days on set I've mm-hmm. ever had. Like the amount of like my head was literally hurting from laughter after filming that scene because it, yeah. it was it was we had a great time. I've been trying to reach the heights. Yeah.